Well, as, as many of you know, Pastor Nancy was here and she ministered about angels. And she, she talked about the fact that, that God was sending uh, more angels for the working of miracles to this body. And so I just want to play this clip and let you hear it from her mouth as to what she says. So go ahead and well, play I clip, started please. sensing some things in my hotel room, and uh, coming into the service tonight, it, it he made it clearer to me why I was sensing what I was sensing, and that is because God's dispatching more angels to this local church for the purpose of miracle power. There are different angels in heaven that have different job assignments. And God is dispatching for his plan and purpose. And because he's found a place where his word is honored and glorified, that through this location, he can bless many. He wants to reach people. He wants to help people. And when he finds a place that will allow him that, he's pleased to, if I could say this, dispatch heavenly artillery. Amen. So praise the Lord. That should excite you. It excited me. And then I was thinking and praying about the fact that, okay, I taught on angels probably in 2011 or whenever, a long time ago. And, um, and we know, all of us in, in this body, if you've heard uh, us pray, that we commission the angels to encamp round about us, protect us from all harm. We apply the blood. We've got weapons that God has given us. But we have never really focused on, on what she's saying, that now we have, the Lord has dispatched, he's assigned to this body more angels. We've always known we've had them, and I believe that's why we've been protected from a lot of the things that have been going on in, in the city, in the world. Uh, we're just, we've just been protected because we believe in those angels. And I believe that even all the kids believe in the angels because they've been taught from day one a little bit about angels. But I was prompted by the Holy Spirit to, to delve into this a little more and to find out exactly what we are to do with these angels that have been dispatched, that have been assigned to this body for the working of miracles. And we have been believing as a body and as intercessors, we have been believing for a long time in our times of prayer. We have been believing and, and agreeing that, that there will be signs and wonders and miracles in this place according to the word in the, the first church, the early church in the book of Acts. And so we are to replicate those things in our body and we know that that in order to do that, we have to be as excited as they were, <laughs> amen. And so that's why we've been talking about seeking his face, pressing into him, listening to his voice, so we can be sure that we hear what he tells us to do with respect to our angels. And uh, in listening to Pastor Nancy, you know, she mentioned the fact that she had, um, had really forgotten about the, the hundred angels that had been dispatched to her husband, Ed. And those angels, God showed him, I'm giving you a hundred angels and they are to assist you. They are to help you in your ministry of healing. And so she had kind of forgot about it after his passing in 2013, I believe. And so the Lord reminded her of that. And the Lord reminded her that, that those hundred angels did not go back to heaven with Ed. They stayed here because they've been dispatched to earth to help. 
and to perform miracles. So he, God told her, he said, you have 50 of those angels and I'm giving the other 50 to ministries and I'm believing that that's us you know, that are hungry and thirsting where the word goes forth and where we believe. But see, you have to believe in angels before they manifest. And remember what she said. She said, the more you talk about them, the more they will manifest. So it's important that we begin talking about them. You know, there are certain things that that we need to say. Um, We all know. Bible says life and death is in the power of the tongue. And I believe that this body, those of you who are here, those of you who have been listening, uh, know that, okay, don't say stupid stuff (laughs) because our words have power. And so you have to see that there is a realm of the spirit that we can walk in that you cannot see with your natural eyes. Occasionally, there will be a manifestation. You'll see an angel, possibly. We don't seek after those things. But but there is a realm of the spirit that we can walk in and be aware of. But it's going to take us getting in the word, praying, believing God, what the word says about these angels. Do you understand? So this is what we're going to do. We're going to study these angels. I'm going to give you lots of examples of actual manifestations. And if you don't believe, then then just sit there. (laughs) But I believe by hearing not only the examples from the word of God, because angels have manifested in the Old and the New Testament. This isn't something that has passed away. Do you understand? We just haven't been aware of it. We haven't appropriated it. And I'm telling you, it's going to change your life hearing and receiving these truths. And so it's important that we we be open and receptive and not, oh, really, that happened? Yes, these things did happen. The, The things I am going to tell you, some of the examples, you know, really seem way on out there. But I'm telling you, they're by reputable people, not just weirdos. Do you understand? People who seek God's face and they know, they hear the voice of God. And really what excited me so much about this is miracles. And she mentioned that um, I believe in while she was here or maybe in another one of her messages, she, she ministered the fact that that angels were present in a service and her husband saw them and they had certain things in their hands and they were standing behind certain people. And so they had uh, eyes, they had uh, organs, they had legs, they had certain body parts that had been dispatched from heaven for them, for the people that were there, but many of them took those back to heaven because the people did not receive. So I don't believe that's us. I don't believe that's us. I believe that all of us want all that God has for us and we can't let our mind booger things up. Good term. Don't use it kids, but it's a good term. But I'm I'm telling you that sometimes we get so Um, logical and so intellectual that we can talk ourselves out of things. This is why you spend much time praying in the Holy Ghost. You spend much time praying and listening to the Father and believing what the Word of God says. So the um, foundation verse, and it's at the top of of your paper for this series, is found in Hebrews 1.14. And this is a scripture worth meditating on. And it says, are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? This is talking about the angels. And, And Paul is calling them ministering spirits. And they're sent forth to minister for them. That's for you and I. The Amplified says, are not all the angels ministering spirits sent out by God to serve 
accompany and protect those who will inherit salvation. Of course they are. So we see that these, according to the word, these angels are for us. They're to minister for us. And then we have to go to the accompanying verse, which is Psalms 103:20, which says, bless the Lord, you his angels who excel in strength, who do his word, heeding the voice of his word. This is so important because how do you activate the angels? Well, you find out what they respond to. And this clearly says they hear or heed the voice of the word. And what are we talking about? We're talking about the word of God coming out of your mouth. The King James says, bless the Lord, ye his angels who excel in strength that do his commandments, hearkening, hearkening. In other words, they're on red alert to listen to the words coming out of your mouth because we are the voice in the earth today. We're the voice of the word. That's why Christianity is called the great confession. (laughs) We are to confess what God says, not what devil talk says or what the world says. And so this is why we spend so much effort in training you and me and all of us to speak the word only to speak the word only. And as we study this, you'll realize how important it is for you to speak the word only. This is life and death. Just like the scripture says, death and life is in the power of the tongue. But I I pray that the spirit of God quickens you to say only what God says. And then when you begin to practice saying only what God says, guess what? You'll train your mind to think only what God says because you're going to speak what you're thinking. It starts in the thought process. But I'm telling you, we have to do what 2 Corinthians 10, 5 says and cast down thoughts and imagination that exalt themselves the word of God against the word of God. The battlefield is in your head. It's between your ears. And so it's training yourself, disciplining yourselves. And of course, we've talked about this before. You have to protect what goes in your eye gates, what goes in your ear gates, and what you spend all your time doing. I mean, you have to make some adjustments in your life. And it is truly life and death. It is your life or death for you every single day. So it says that they hearken unto the voice of the word. So I wrote this on your paper. Clearly the angels are at our disposal. They're at the disposal of the saints, those of us who are believers. And they are instructed to obey the word spoken out of believers' mouths. Do you understand that? When we speak contrary to the word, and this is how you need to picture it, they're just standing there with their wings folded. And we're gonna talk about provoking our angels at another time. But I'm telling you that they respond to the word. Their ears perk up when they hear the word. And then they go about to do the bidding that you have spoken out of your mouth. Now, we know from James, out of the same fountain cannot come bitter and sweet. So we're going to have to train our mouth to say what God says. And so if they are not told, they're not hearing the word, then what they do is they just stand there with their wings at attention and they don't do anything. So I believe that from this day forward, we won't have lazy angels (laughs) or angels that don't have anything to do because we know the word. But you see, it has to go back to the basic foundation of get in the word, get in the word, get in the word. Because when you speak the word, the angels are in flight. When you speak stupid stuff, somebody else hears you doing that. And we don't like what he's planning for that, those words to manifest in your life if they're contrary to the word. 
So I want to tell you of some experiences that I have heard and I have read about that will help you understand the importance of angels. Now, I, I really believe that as you go through your day every day, as I do for you, and I do plead the blood of Jesus over you, I commission the angels to encamp round about you and protect you from all harm. But there's so much more that can be done as far as speaking the word and sending forth the angels. And so I believe that you're going to learn how to do this. All of us are going to learn from these lessons on what we are to do with our angels. So this is uh, a story by, uh, a true story that is by Charles Capps and his book, I believe we have it in the bookstore, it's called Angels. There are a lot of books on angels. I wouldn't just pick up any book on angel. Um, but when, um, when you know the people, you know their reputation, um, you follow those who are following um, God and, and are a good example. So he says, several years ago, we were flying from England, Arkansas to minister in the northeastern part of the state. It was rainy, cloudy, foggy when we took off. We were on an IFR flight plan when you are flying in bad weather, you depend on your instruments and the controller for directions. The controller who is tracking you on radar is the only person in the world who knows where you are and where the other planes are around you. That one day I was in contact with Memphis Center for instructions, they said climb to 7,000 feet. As we were climbing through the clouds, the Memphis controller came on the radio, descend to 6,000 immediately. From the sound of his voice, I knew there was trouble, so it didn't take me long to point the noise, nose down. My wife said, what's going on? I said, my angel just tapped that controller on the, soldier, on the shoulder and said, you dummy, you got another plane at 7,000. Get, get him down from there. He said, I had no fear at all that the ministering spirits were taking care of the situation. I had no doubt about it. My angel was at work. So you see, the angels are ministering spirits sent forth to minister for you when you believe them and believe the word and stand on the word. You should not leave your house you should not get on a plane. You should not get in your car without commissioning the, the ministering spirits, the angels to encamp round about you and protect you from all harm. Now, there was a, a story that his daughter had told about uh, a, a time that she was driving in Tulsa and she was driving on one of those expressways and they have toll roads there. And she came around a curve going 60 miles an hour. And she, um, there was, there was a, an accident and everybody was stopped. Well, there was no way that she could stop. There was no way. But you know, when you're standing on the word and you're believing that the angels are in camp round about you, protecting you from all harm, then that's what happens. They do their bidding. They do what they've been commissioned to do because they're on assignment. They're on assignment for you. They're here to help you. And so she said, she yelled the name of Jesus. And then of course she had already believed in angels raised by her dad, Charles Capps. And so what happened is supernaturally, she ended up on the other side of the accident and looked back in the rear view mirror as she progressed on down the freeway. She says she has no idea how that happened other than believing God that the angels of God picked her vehicle up and took her over on the other side of that accident. There are so, so many 
stories that are truth that have happened. Um, Nancy Dufresne on another message, she was telling about a time when she was Miss Oklahoma. And she said they had a very rigorous schedule uh, as Miss Oklahoma. She had all these um, appointments that she had to make and she had to drive to them. And she said her chaperone was a 70 year old woman and who didn't like to drive. And, and she would have driven, but she said, um, Nancy, she said, when I'm sitting in the driver's seat and there's a sign on the door that says, Miss Oklahoma, and people look over at me, they just get really disappointed. <laughs> and so she said, I would really prefer that you drive, which is great. You know, she said back then you had the big hair and so you had to get up and, and fix all this and it had to last all day because you went from one place to another place to another place. And so she said, this was rather strenuous, but one time this 70 year old woman couldn't go with her. And so she had to go by herself. And she said, I was driving into Tulsa and I was just so, for my next appointment, and she says, I was just exhausted. I was just exhausted. And she said, I went off the road. And she said, I didn't hurt anything, I just went off the road. And I just sat there and I said, God, I need some strength. I need some strength to be able to make it through these other appointments and into the night. And she said at that point, she felt something on her head. She felt like fingers on her head and she fell back and for a few seconds. And then when she kind of came to, she realized that the angel of God had touched her and strengthened her and she, when she sat up, she, had, she said, I had plenty of energy. In fact, you know, toward the end of the night, I, I was thinking, am I gonna be able to sleep? Because I've got so much energy here. But the angel strengthened her. She said this happened another time when she was totally exhausted and the angel touched her on the head. She felt the touch and then saw the manifestation of the supernatural energy. And so she was able to, to go on and fulfill her duties. But I'm telling you, angels are real and they're here to help you. Now, if you recall, there are instances in the word of God where the angels came to strengthen Jesus. Remember after he was in the wilderness, also when he was in the garden of Gethsemane praying, the Bible, that verbiage is there. The angels came to strengthen him. And so if they did that, for Jesus, they did that for Nancy, they will do that for you also. Do you understand? So let me give you another little story from Charles Capps because his are all flying stories. He was approaching another uh, air, airport in Indiana and he said he heard that tower telling another aircraft and don't you know that if you're flying an airplane you have to really plead the blood over that guy that's in the control tower that he actually is awake that he's hearing the voice of God for you and so she said he said I heard the tower telling another aircraft turn right you have traffic at 12 o'clock turn right immediately and he looked out and there he was right in the window of his plane, normally that would be a frightening situation, but it didn't bother me at all. The knowledge of God's promises took the fear out of me. I know the angels have charge over me and they are keeping me in all my ways. And so angels, he says, get involved in emergency situations, but so many times they go unnoticed. So there are quite a few of his stories in here. She, he tells of another time that his daughter, Annette, who wore contact lenses, um, she took it out to, to burn the trash and she lost a contact lens in the glass. She took out the trash. She came in the house and said, Daddy, I lost my contact lens. 
where did you lose it out by the trash barrel now for those of you who are young and are wearing contacts there they didn't used to be soft you know I wore contacts for years and they were hard plastic okay that you couldn't roll these in a ball so that's I'm sure what kind of contacts she had and so he said the thought came to my head listen your head will talk you out of the things of God well we'll never find it that's what his head said we might as well forget it but I had been confessing all the good things that God's Word promises whatever I do I will prosper no weapon formed against me will prosper I'm blessed coming in and I'm blessed going out this is why it's so important that you make your confessions every day you know, you, you come to school, you kids, you make your confessions, and some of you are just da 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 da, like, why do I have to say this again? So you'll believe it. Yeah, that's right. So you'll get it down in your heart, and you'll believe what God's word says, because you never know when you need that to be activated in your life. So he said, I just said, in the name of Jesus, we'll go find it. My head said, You dummy you know you aren't gonna find it. Though my head knew I wouldn't find it, my inner man acted on my words. Besides that, my angels were standing there. They said, we had better get busy. He'll be looking all night. I took the flashlight and we walked outside to the trash barrel. I flipped on the flashlight and saw something glistening in the glass. I slipped up to it and sure enough, there balanced on the top of a blade of grass was Annette's contact lens. The angels help. They help us find our keys when we've misplaced them. They help us find our homework when we miss. They help us do the things that we need to help us be a success. I'm telling you, angels are real they are real and they are here to help you he says this is the last one he was a farmer and a preacher and a um, pilot another time I was working with three men on my farm overhauling a small hydraulic pump see this applies to not just women but men and young men and women and he said, we were standing in a gravel driveway around the tailgate of a pickup truck. While we were working, one of the needle bearings in the pump dropped in the gravel. So you men probably know what that means. Some of you women too. This needle bearing was about the size of a pencil lead and a 16th of an inch long. That's tiny. After looking for 10 minutes, we couldn't find it. The first thought that came to my mind was, we'll never find it in this gravel. Let's just forget it. So you see, you gotta renew your mind to the word of God. You gotta immediately cast down thoughts that are contrary to the word of God. So he said, the spirit of God rose up in me and I remembered the contact lens. We had been looking under, we had been looking under our own ability. I realized that I was about to shut out my angels. So I said, in the name of Jesus, I'm going to find that bearing. When I knelt down again, the first thing I saw was that little needle bearing. A coincidence? No. My words brought the angels on the scene to help me find the bearing. And I believe the angels kind of took it wherever it was and put it right there in his view so he could find it. So I want you to know that angels are real. Angels are real. And we're going to learn how to utilize them. Nancy told of another story about a lady who was a great intercessor. She traveled and prayed with Brother Hagen. Her name was Rachel Tifa Teller, lovely name. But anyway, she, she told the story of how her son had started a church in another city. And uh, it, was, it was kind of a challenge for him to do this. And so he called his mom and said, Mom, you know, we really need your help. You're going to have to move. You and dad are going to have to move over here. Dad can get a job. We'll find you a place to stay. But I need help starting this church. And so... Um, 
she didn't say how old Rachel was at the time, but, but it was a long time ago and she probably wasn't a spring chicken. And so what happened was they drove, they packed up all day and then they began to drive to find, uh, to get to their destination, but they couldn't drive there all in one day. So they had to stop. There were all these little towns and, um, and back then we did not have hotels like you have today. We had motels. Some of you remember that. You see a little bit of on, on Marlin Street. They're little bitty dive little bitty uh, places where uh, they all have outside entrances. The, the hotels are, are really, the hotel rooms are really small. Um, they also maybe have a, a tea tiny swimming pool. You know, this is what I was accustomed. We didn't have Omni, we didn't have the Westin when I was growing up. So these little dive hotels had a sign, a neon sign out front, and it would say vacancy or no vacancy to let the people know. Well, they had traveled and traveled and it was getting about midnight and, and the, the son was driving and he said, mom, you know, this is about the last town we're, we're approaching. So, you know, we're, we got to stop. We got to get some rest. So you're going to have to sleep in the car tonight. And so Rachel said, no way am I going to sleep in this car tonight. We will find a hotel. I've already sent my angel ahead to find us a hotel room. So they get to the next little city and they're driving and, and all the hotels have no vacancy, no vacancy. And so she says, son, pull in this one over here. He says, mom, it says no vacancy. She says, I don't care. I sent my angel ahead of time to get me a room. I told God, you ca called me to do this, to go to this other city and help my son. This is what you wanted me to do. So you angels find me a place to stay tonight so I don't have to sleep in my car. So what happened? She convinced the son to go in and ask, do you have a room? I know the sign says no vacancy, but do you by chance have a room? And the lady says, as a matter of fact, I do. She said, you know, a man just came in who's a truck driver and he said, listen, you know, I would love to stay the night. I've already paid for it. But he says, I've got a special, you know, cargo and I've got to get going because I just found out I've got a deadline and I got to get there. And she said, you know, so he left and he's already paid for the room. But she said, you know, I did something that, that I've never done before. And that is I went in and I cleaned the room myself. I got it all ready. This is in the middle of the night, okay? So this lady go, goes and cleans the room and they have a room for the night. Well, she put her angels to work. She put her angels to work. She believed God. Now, now you have to understand that she was doing the work of God. She was doing what God told her to do. Do you understand? Those angels are assigned to you so that you can have a good life, so that you don't have to sleep in your car. Do you understand? So there are many stories that we're gonna talk to you about during this series, but the next part I want us to look at today is facts about angels. So this is gonna be kind of um, educational, I guess, not real rah, 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 but I want you to get these facts down so you understand that this is the foundation that we're going to build on with respect to understanding these angels. So pay attention because there's a lot of scriptures because I want you to know that what I'm telling you with respect to these facts are not just something that, um, that, somebody made up. This is truth according to the word of God. So listen up very carefully. I want you to know that angels are mentioned 300 times in the Bible, 300 times throughout the Bible. And the first time is in Genesis 3:24. And I'm going to read this scripture to you. And this is 
this says, so he drove out the man and he placed at the east of the garden of Edom, Eden, cherubims and a flaming sword, which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of the life. So here we know that after Adam and Eve sin, then uh, they were kicked out of the garden basically. And um, they, they, God did not want them going back into the garden and eating of the tree of life in their fallen state. So he put these cherubims there to guard the entrance to the garden. Now I saw this, this little uh, picture that a child had driven, uh, that had drawn with respect to this situation because I'm sure they were taught in, in kids church about the fact that God drove them out of the garden. And so the picture that came up and this child drew was God in the front seat of this big old car with Adam and Eve in the back seat because he drove them out of the garden. So I thought that was real cute. You, you don't understand when you talk to kids what's going on in their minds, but they pictured a car a Cadillac driving, driving Adam and Eve out of the garden. So that was the first time angels are mentioned and these were cherubims. And then the last time it's mentioned is in Revelation 22, 16. And it says, and he said unto me, these sayings are faithful and true. And the Lord God of the Holy Prophet sent his angel to show unto his servants the things which must shortly be done. So it might behoove you to go ahead. Behoove, you like that word? Behoove, that's a good word. Remember that. Um, it might be a good idea for you just to read the book of Revelation because there are so many instances of angels working and doing the bidding in the book of Revelation. And it is the only book, as I said, that it says you will be blessed for reading it and just believe God for interpretation of some of it. Um, but what are angels? Angels are ministering spirits who function publicly uh, to perform religious and charitable duties. They run errands. They act as an attendant or a waiter. They wait on us and they relieve, serve and provide aid to what? Believers. They function publicly and they are acting as an attendant or a waiter and they relieve, serve and provide aid to the believers. They are basically God's agents. So you have an agent, you have a secret agent that um, is actively engaged with assignments on the earth and their headquarters are in heaven. And John 1, 50 through 51 tells us this. Jesus answered and said unto him, because I said unto thee, I saw thee under the fig tree. And Jesus is talking to Nathanael. You can read the background scriptures. He said, do you believe? Thou shalt see greater things than these. And he said unto him, verily, verily, I say unto you, hereafter you shall see the heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the son of man. So you see, this gives us a clue that what they do, they get their assignments from headquarters in heaven and they come and they come to earth and they do their bidding, they do their assignments and then they go back and wait for another assignment and they wait, those are, are certain angels and then there are other angels that are assigned to you. You have at least one angel assigned to you. And so basically they are covenant enforcers. I like that. We have a whole book of covenant promises that God has promised to protect us, to strengthen us, to take care of us, to help us find our keys, to help us find our homework or whatever. And so they are covenant enforcers. I want you to know that faith is required to access the ministry of angels. 
And we know that, that according to the word of God, when we make Jesus the Lord of our life, when we receive Jesus, when we are saved, that's soteria, that's all the benefits, which includes healing and deliverance and safety and protection. And all these things are encompassed in our covenant that the angels are required to enforce when we use our faith. Faith is the currency of heaven. Do you understand that? Faith gets things done. And how, what is faith? Faith is believing, believing in your heart and speaking out of your mouth. That's why it's so important, not just to think things, things, these things, but to speak these things, to speak it out of your mouth. Because you're not speaking just to you. Even if you're in the bathroom all by yourself, you got that angel there to do your bidding. So you speak what God's word says so the angels can perform what the covenant says they are to do. I hope that makes sense. So when you activate your faith, you activate your angels. When you activate your faith, you activate your angels. So what else do we need to know about angels? They were created by Jesus. And the oldest book in the Bible is the book of Job. And in Job 38, four through seven, it says, where wast thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare if thou hast understanding, who hath laid them measures thereof? Lay the measures thereof, if thou knowest, or who hath stretched the line upon it? Whereupon are their foundations thereof fastened, or who laid the cornerstone thereof? When the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted by joy. That's King James. Let's read it in the message so we can understand it. God is responding to Job, and he says, Why do you confuse the issue? Why do you talk without knowing what you're talking about? Pull yourself together. Up on your feet, stand tall. I have some questions for you and I want some straight answers. Where were you when I created the earth? Tell me, since you know so much, who decided on its size? Certainly you'll know that. Who came up with the blueprints and measurements? How was its foundation poured and who set the cornerstone while the morning stars sang in chorus and all the angels shouted praise? Well, that's a lot that was said between God and Job, but the part I want you to understand is that the angels were there at creation and they were shouting praise. So angels were created before man was created. And they were created by Jesus. Colossians 1.16 says, For by him, by Jesus, were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible. Whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. Therefore, there are no baby angels. Do you understand that? There are no baby angels. In spite of the pictures of those fat little babies with those little bows and arrows, there are no baby angels with those cute little wings. See, people make up things. And, and you know, you have to understand that, that angels are not female. You know, as I instructed Patricia, Tricia to get um, a picture of angels for some of you who would like to color, most of the pictures on the internet are of long flowing blonde hair with boobs, these women who are depicted as angels. But that is so contrary to the word of God because nowhere in the Bible does it mention angels being women. So, you know, I know women, watch me roar, they're strong, but yeah, I don't want a wimpy woman protecting me. Yeah, I want a big, strong male angel protecting me. So, Hebrews, let's find the scripture that confirms this. Um, Luke 24, three and four, this is what it says, that 
They entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass as they were perplexed thereabout, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. So this is the, the women going to the um, grave of Jesus, the tomb, Mark 16, 5. And entering into the sepulcher, they saw a young man, not a young woman, sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white garment, and they were afraid. Acts 1, 9 through 11. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up in a cloud and received out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, this is when Jesus ascended, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up in heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up into heaven, shall come again in a like manner as you see him go. So, we see that angels are referred to as male, full-grown, strong men, not women. Also, going back to the fact that angels are supernatural beings, distinctly separate from the human race. They have a specific ministry toward believers. Do you understand that? And they, they have emotion, but they don't have human emotion. Do you understand? And in Hebrews 1, 7 through 14, it says, And of the angels he saith, who maketh his angels spirits, and his ministers a flame of fire, all they, are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister again for them who are heirs of salvation? So I want you to know that there are an innumerable amount of these angels. And in my opinion, I know I have been at times, I remember distinctly that I wasn't feeling well and I, I was uh, commissioning the angels to go forth and to get people to pray for me. This was years and years ago, I remember distinctly. I said, okay, there are angels out there that nobody's using. So I commission you angels to go forth and find the people who will pray for me because I'm not feeling well and I felt lower than whale poop at that particular point in time. And I sent your angels if they weren't doing anything to do my bidding. So there's, there's a lot of angels. There's an innumerable amount of angels. And uh, they are also called the armies of God. So there's a lot of them. Hebrews 12, 22 says, But ye are come unto Mount Zion and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels. Job 25, 3 says, Is there any number of the, his armies? And upon whom doth not his light arise? Matthew 26, 53 says, Jesus said to his disciples, this is so cool. Right after he cut off, Peter cut off the ear of the high priest's servant. Thinkest thou not that I can now pray to the father and she, he shall presently give me more than 12 legions of angels? You know, Peter got a little bit of rebuke right there. A common legion in Jesus' day was 4,800 men. So 12 legions would be 57,600 angels that Jesus is saying, I could have had access right now to 57,600 angels. For all of you mathematicians, that's pretty, pretty cool. But there are lots of angels and you have to consider that one third of the angels we know went with Lucifer. So there's still two thirds two-thirds available for us and they're innumerable angels do not marry or they do not reproduce baby angels Matthew 22 30 for in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage but are as the angels of God in heaven so this is clear that we will not be married in heaven just like the angels are not married in heaven. We're gonna to be too busy to be having babies and, and doing all that kind of stuff in heaven. So um, do that stuff while you're here because you're not gonna be there uh, doing that in heaven. Angels do not die. Luke 20, 
34 through 36, and Jesus answering said unto them, the children of this world marry and are given in marriage, but they which shall be accounted worthy to obtain that world and the resurrection from the dead, neither marry nor are given in marriage, neither can they die anymore, for they are equal unto the angels and are the children of God, being the children of the resurrection. What does that mean? Just as the angels live forever, when we get to heaven, we will live forever. And I truly believe that uh, so many people have gone to heaven and their stories are, are the same in that you will be about 30 years old when you're in heaven. And so I'm excited about that, um, 30 years old, instead of, you know, living forever at whatever age you leave this earth. Do you understand? So we're gonna be perfect in heaven. Uh, no glasses, no wrinkles, no gray hair. It's gonna be, you know, I, I have my faith for that. You can believe whatever you wanna believe, but that's how I believe. Uh, so it's gonna be a good place to live forever. So that's why it's so important that we do what the word says while we're here. We have a job to do while we're here and life is short. Even if we live out the 120 years, should Jesus tarry, Maranatha, come quickly, Lord. Um, we still, this is just a short period of time because we're gonna live eternally there forever and ever in infinitum, forever. All angels were created good and holy. The evil angels are those which followed Satan in his rebellion against God. In Genesis 1:31, we know that God created everything and everything that he ever created, he said, this is good. But the thing about it is angels were created with the power of choice. And so we know that one third of the angels decided to go with Lucifer. This is confirmed in Revelation 12, three through five. And it says, and there appeared another wonder in heaven and behold a great red dragon having seven heads and 10 horns and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. We know it's interesting that as you study the Bible, there's bits and pieces of what angels did, where they came from, what are they doing throughout the entire Bible. It would be nice if it was all put in one book. <laughs> where we could read it from beginning to end. But you have to research, you have to find out what the Bible is saying. So we know that Jesus said he witnessed Satan's fall. Luke 10, 19, and he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven when Satan filled with pride and he desired to be worshiped. And so we know that Satan was a key figure in heaven. His name was Lucifer at the time. He was a beautiful angel. And I'm going to read in Isaiah 14, 12 through 14. It says, how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? Son of the morning, morning star, that was his name. How art thou cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. See, he was so dadgum prideful. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high God. What you have to understand is pride entered into him. He wanted to be worshiped. He was jealous. That's why we say, don't be jealous. Don't be, don't want what covet what somebody else has. This is pride. He thought he ought to be worshiped instead of God. He had opened the door to pride. And that's why the scripture says pride goes before a fall. 
So we will get into some more of what um, uh, Lucifer did and what he did with those those one third of the angels. And we're gonna find out some more facts. So we didn't get through all the facts. So bring your paper next time and we will continue to, to find out about what's going on with these angels that are assigned to Choose Life Church and to this body for miracles. And so God has to use somebody. The angels aren't walking around by themselves doing things. They have to minister for you and do your bidding, but you have to know what bidding you want them to do.